Meet The Andy Griffith Show, a classic 1960s TV series that captured the hearts of viewers with its simple charm and memorable characters. Have you ever wondered when you first tuned in to this timeless show? Whether it was a nostalgic family gathering or a solo binge watch session, we've got some surprising, funny, and even sad facts about the show that will keep you hooked. So, when was the first time you found yourself immersed in the world of Mayberry? As you reminisce about your first encounter with the show, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic sitcom. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more fascinating tidbits about The Andy Griffith Show and share your own experiences. The Andy Griffith Show, a classic American sitcom that premiered in 1960, is a heartwarming portrayal of small-town life in Maybury. The series revolves around Andy Taylor, portrayed by Andy Griffith, the wise and affable sheriff, as he navigates the challenges of maintaining peace and order in the tight-knit community. Set in the idyllic town of Mayberry, the show captures the simple pleasures and genuine values of rural America in the 1960s. Sheriff Andy is aided by his bumbling but good-natured deputy, Barney Fife, played by Don Knotts, who adds a delightful comedic element to the series. Together, they tackle various situations, from minor disputes to light-hearted misadventures. The show's charm lies in its focus on the everyday lives of the townspeople, including Andy's young son, Opie, portrayed by Ron Howard, and Aunt B, played by Frances Bovia, who becomes the maternal figure in their household. The relationships between the characters form the core of the series, emphasizing community, friendship, and moral values. Throughout its run, The Andy Griffith Show garnered critical acclaim and widespread popularity. It consistently ranked among the top-rated programs and received several Emmy Awards showcasing its enduring appeal. The show's success can be attributed to its genuine portrayal of human relationships, humor, and the universal themes of community and family. In conclusion, The Andy Griffith Show remains a beloved classic celebrated for its timeless humor, endearing characters, and portrayal of a bygone era. Its legacy is firmly etched in television history, a testament to its enduring impact on audiences and the medium itself. The Andy Griffith Show, a TV series that began in October 1960, featured Doug Dillard, Rodney Dillard, Dean Webb, and Mitch Jane as the four Darwin sons. Interestingly, these actors were also members of the bluegrass group The Dillards. Andy Griffith himself joined them in a performance on the show. In its original network run, the opening credits saw a slight expansion. Following Opie's action of throwing a rock into the lake, the camera shifted to a close-up of the rippling water, revealing the sponsor's product logo. The characters of Andy and Opie first appeared on The Danny Thomas Show, Danny Meets Andy Griffith in February 1960. This show, produced by Danny Thomas Production Company, introduced Francis Bavia as Harriet Perkins, who later portrayed Aunt B in The Andy Griffith Show. These straightforward details provide insights into the unique connections and timeline of the show, offering a glimpse into its behind-the-scenes dynamics. The map displayed behind Andy's desk in The Andy Griffith Show was not a state map of Idaho, as widely believed, but rather an upside-down map of Cincinnati, OH. In the unofficial pilot of the series, aired on The Danny Thomas Show, Danny meets Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith reprised his role as Andy Taylor. The episode showcased a traffic violation incident in Mayberry, with Frank Cady playing the town drunk and Francis Bavia appearing as Henrietta Perkins, not as Aunt B. Opie Taylor, the character played by Ron Howard, was named after Opie Cates, a prominent band leader from the 1930s and 1940s admired by both Andy Griffith and Sheldon Leonard, the show's producer. These intriguing details provide a unique perspective on the Andy Griffith show's background, emphasizing connections and influences that shaped its development. Everett Sloan, credited for the iconic theme tune lyrics, portrayed Munchener Jubal Foster in one episode titled The Keeper of the Flame. The Ford Galaxy served as Andy and Barney's squad car, generously supplied by a local Ford dealer. The studio received the latest models, and once replaced, the old cars were repainted and sold by the dealer. A total of 10 Ford Galaxies featured in various episodes. The series theme, The Fishing Hole, initially had lyrics by Everett Sloan, but the producers opted for whistling to set the show's tone. Earl Hagen, also the composer, performed the distinctive whistling, contributing to the show's memorable soundtrack. The song's lyrics were ultimately omitted in favor of the catchy whistle, becoming a hallmark of the series. 
These insights into the show's behind-the-scenes details, from guest actors to the choice of squad cars and the evolution of the theme song, shed light on the pragmatism and creativity woven into the Andy Griffith show's fabric. Thelma Lou's last name, Whitfield, was revealed in Season 6, Episode 17, The Return of Barney Fife, after her marriage to Gerald Whitfield. Her occupation, however, remained undisclosed, with the only known detail being her work in an unspecified office. Andy Taylor, portrayed by Andy Griffith, earned the eighth spot in TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Dads of All Time. The character's wholesome portrayal contributed to this recognition in the world of television. In an early episode, it was disclosed that Barney, played by Don Knotts, served in the Army. Stationed on Staten Island, he had the responsibility of safeguarding over 3,000 books, providing an interesting twist to his character's backstory. These snippets from The Andy Griffith Show, ranging from Thelma Lou's revelations to Andy Taylor's esteemed TV dad status and Barney's military past, add layers to the show's narrative, providing fans with intriguing details about the beloved characters. In The Andy Griffith Show, the telephone operator, Sarah, maintained an around-the-clock presence without a last name or a visible off-duty moment. Her character remained shrouded in mystery throughout the series. When Howard McNear faced declining health and left the show, the departure of his character, Floyd, was tactfully handled. The storyline explained his absence by having Floyd sell the barber shop and relocate to be with his daughter. During Jack Burns' tenure as Deputy Warren Ferguson, the scripts written for Don Knotts' Barney Fife were repurposed. This strategic move ensured a seamless transition, utilizing existing material for the new character. These pragmatic, behind-the-scenes decisions added unique layers to the show's narrative, keeping the characters and storylines fluid. They showcased the show's adaptability and resourcefulness in the face of challenges. The final stretch of season three in the Andy Griffith show inadvertently entered the public domain due to a clerical error in the 1960s. Episodes like High Noon in Mayberry, The Great Filling Station Robbery, and others are widely accessible, often with different music owing to the copyrighted theme song. Sheriff Andy Taylor typically eschew with a hat, necktie, or sidearm in Mayberry unless special circumstances arose, such as 6P visits or pursuing an escaped convict. Smoking was a rarity for him, occurring in select episodes. Before the show, Andy Griffith, a successful stand-up comedian, initially envisioned himself as the main comedic force. However, the popularity of Deputy Barney Fife, played by Don Knotts, led Griffith to shift gears, letting Knotts take the comedic spotlight while he played the straight man. The show's evolution, public domain quirks, and Andy Griffith's stand-up background offer intriguing glimpses into the dynamics that shaped the Andy Griffith show. The Andy Griffith Show took a unique approach to filming, opting for on-location shoots instead of traditional sound stages. Laugh tracks were added later to maintain actor focus and create an authentic atmosphere in Maybury. Interestingly, the sheriff's office in the series lacks a visible restroom, adding a touch of realism to the show's setting. Mary and Peggy, featured as nurses, played essential roles in the county, contributing to the broader dynamics of The Andy Griffith Show. The decision to shoot on location and incorporate laugh tracks post-production reflects Andy Griffith's commitment to authenticity and performance focus. The absence of a visible restroom in the sheriff's office adds a subtle detail to the show's realistic portrayal. Mary and Peggy's roles as county nurses contribute to the broader narrative, showcasing the multifaceted aspects of life in Maybury. In keeping with the show's straightforward style, these behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the practical considerations and choices made during the production of The Andy Griffith Show, offering fans a deeper understanding of the show's unique dynamics.